Hey guys, uh, Ronnie here, and I'm doing what I promise. I'm embracing the YouTube video for Ask Ronnie's and um, hopefully producing this podcast. Uh, I kind of forgot how to do it, to be honest, so I have to figure out, to figure out all the little technicalities. But here I am in my hoodie. I'm not wearing my glasses because there's a big reflection, and I hate that, so I'm going to be squinting a lot, so bear with me. But I have some questions, and I thought I would just... Just do it. Baby is napping. I have about an hour. Fingers crossed <laughs> that he doesn't start to cry in the middle. We'll see. And I'm jamming in as much work as I possibly can. Um, I just posted the most exciting news about fit blogging, by the way. Uh, so if you follow, if you're a fellow fit blogger, fit blogginer, <laughs> then um, you're planning on going to the conference. We signed, we recently signed a new sponsor, Neutralite, and they are hosting an off-site tour at one of the largest North American organic herb farms. So I'm really, really excited about that. But anyway, that's a side note. I just made that announcement moments ago and it's just exciting. All right, so let me get to right to questions. Um, the first one is from Cynthia and Cynthia says... Um, she does not have a website and she put a, a sad face which just makes me smile for some reason. Um, I have been experiencing tons of peri perimenopausal symptoms including a lot of abdominal pain which I think is either hormonal or from poor thyroid troubles. Anyways, um, it causes me pain, fatigue, weakness, inability to do what I want to do which is lose weight and exercise, enjoy the outdoors, cook healthy meals for me and hubby. So, how can I motivate myself to cook good, low-fat, low-cal foods to lose weight and feel great? By the way, you look amazingly lovely. Well, thank you, Cynthia. Um, okay, so first, this question is a little tough for me because I am not a doctor and I'm not perimenopausal yet. <laughs> not that I know of, although I have to say I'm having hot flashes, I think, every once in a while. I'm like, I'm always cold. I'm notoriously known for being cold. And um, anymore, the husband's like, it's cold. Can we turn up the heat? I'm like, what are you, crazy? It's not cold in here. And I thought, oh, no. Is it happening? I'm a little young, I think. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will fill me in. Um, but that being said, Cynthia, uh, your question is good. And I think it, I can relate to it not for perimenopausal symptoms, but for my back. When my back goes out, I have zero desire to do anything. Um, it's just sometimes I think when we're kind of struck with being sick or having issues or especially stomach pains and fatigue and you just don't feel like doing anything um it's hard to gather up that motivation to uh do the things that you love which you would think would be opposite because you should just want to do those things but it it takes hard it's hard work <laughs> it's hard work to stay motivated and you know that and and i i know that too so the only advice i can give besides i think i just got an instant message <laughs> um Definitely talk to your doctor because I'm I don't know uh, what the medical causes or if there is any treatments whether they're hormonal or non-hormonal or diet concerns you should be thinking about or um, I, I'm sure someone in the medical um, institution medical field what's the word I'm looking for medical group will uh, have some advice for you. Um, I can only kind of approach it from, again, my experience of when I'm getting into those modes or I'm not at 100%. My strategies for doing the things that I know make me feel better is to A, remind me that they make me feel better. So, for example, maybe if you can't get outdoors and do like your typical runs or hikes or whatever it is that you do outside, just go for a nice stroll or a walk or just do something outside that kind of reminds you that this is something that you like and and maybe the fresh air and being outside and having a conversation with your husband or you know whatever it is that you're doing will kind of start to spark that motivation in you again same with the cooking don't you know go all out and buy ingredients for some recipe that you've never done before just go with a tried and true recipe something that you make all the time that gets you in the kitchen that's easy to do so you give yourself little baby steps little things that you can do that will help you kind of get over that little hump. So my advice would be, again, go talk to a doctor. Find out if there's anything, any kind of treatments that you can do since you know kind of the cause of what's, you know, the cause of your fatigue and um, your issues and see if there's anything that can help. And then take some, take some control and take little baby steps and do little things that will help you feel better. Uh, I think there's... There's lots of little things that you can do, but I know like laying on the couch, like I, a couple weeks ago, I had the heating pad 
And I just, I was like, let me just sit here. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> so it, it happens. But then I'm like, okay, I know I'll feel better if I take a walk. Or I know I'll feel better if I make a self-healthy snack versus grabbing the bag of Doritos just because I'm hungry. Or you just have to, you have to consciously, consciously remind yourself of that all the time. Um, but it's tough. I, I really, it is tough. So I hope you feel better, Cindy. I know you wrote this uh, a few months ago. Um, so if you want to give us an update, that would be great. I know, look, I love... I love and I know other people do when we get um, comments either now on YouTube or on Ronnie's Way um, about how you're doing now and whether or not how you came over it and whether or not my advice made any sense or helped at all which at this point six months later I'm hoping that you you have moved on and that you're outside and cooking and doing all the things that you want to do okay I'm gonna move on <laughs> Am I talking too fast? I feel like I'm talking really fast. I haven't done these in so long. It feels so weird. I know. And I'm not wearing makeup and my hair is in my eye. I'm like letting these bangs grow out. It's a, They're constantly in my eyes. I kind of like it though. It reminds me of my long hair. Yet it's still short. It's like the best of both worlds. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Um, next question is from Melanie. And Melanie says, Hello. I am currently a part-time waitress while I finish up school and I'm fighting and I'm finding that my work is making it hard for me to stick to my diet. I can totally understand that. I worked at McDonald's for five years, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a lot of McDonald's that I eat over those five years. Anyway, I must say though, I am doing a pretty good job. I usually work four to 11, sometimes later. I usually eat a snack before I go to work so I don't get hungry during my shift. I'm also trying really hard not to buy food at work. I'm surrounded by extremely fatty and extremely delicious looking foods. <laughs> not only does uh, this saved me money, but it's better that I don't eat the foods for my diet. My question for you is, do you have any suggestions about light dinners that I can eat before bed? I have tried to just eat dinner. I have tried to... Wait, I'm sorry. I have tried to just not eat dinner because they say you should wait three hours before going to bed, but I'm always so hungry because I haven't eaten dinner yet. Or would you suggest that I eat my dinner before I go to work? I just feel like it's still too early for me to be eating dinner and that... I will still be hungry by the time I get off work. Any suggestions would be helpful. Okay, Melanie, again, I know you wrote this a couple months ago, so I'm hoping, <coughs> sorry, that you've kind of um, maybe found a routine for yourself. But this is a great question, and A, I have to give you props for not eating during work, because that would be, like, if I was writing this question, if I was you, I would be like, how do I stay away from the greasy, fatty, delicious-looking food that I'm serving everybody? Um, so kudos for that not being your your you know, your sticking point or the thing that you're struggling with. Um, and I think your question is a really good one. I would continue to do what it is that you're doing, which is eat something light before work so you don't feel tempted during work, which seems to be working for you, which is awesome. Um, and then after work, I think sometimes having things prepared that you might have made before work um, and that, that you could just pop in the microwave or pop in the oven might be a way to go. Um, but other light things I would think of, like... I know I've been pushing the yogurt lately because I'm like a big yogurt fan right now. Um, but making like a light snack, like don't think about it as meals. Sometimes I think we get so hooked up on like, oh, I have to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you know, your schedule, you're working in the middle of dinner. So if you eat something light before and something light after, then the combination of those two things is your dinner. And that's totally cool. Um, as long as your calories are, you know, evening out at the end and you're balancing and, you know, you feel good, then... No one says you have to eat dinner at 6 p.m. every night. Um, I just think sometimes our cultural cues are part of our problem. So um, that being said, I think, again, so some suggestions. One suggestion would be, again, to make something before work and have it ready so you have something to look forward to when you get home and it's already made and it's, you know, something light and small. Um, you know, even soup, cans of soup, great. Uh, you know, half a sandwich, a salad that you just have ready that you can pull out of the fridge, things like that. Um, the yogurt track, which is what I was like, already going down, which is, you know, a half a cup or six ounces of yogurt with some nuts and a little honey on top. That's a meal. That could be a meal. You know, you can think about it. Call it snack. It's meal. It's semantics. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it'll be nice, high-protein uh, food in your belly before you go to bed. And the whole three hours before bed thing, in my opinion, I find it kind of bogus. Um, I, I don't think it matters. I really don't. I think... If you're eating massive amounts of food right before you go to bed uh, and you've eaten all day and your calories will then go over your calories for the day, then yeah, there's a problem. But if you have been working for the last eight hours and you haven't eaten anything and you're hungry, 
eat something, even if it's a half hour before you go to bed, you, your body still needs those calories. You know, I wouldn't, you know, take down a fast food cheeseburger and a shake, <laughs> you know, but, you know, some yogurt and some nuts uh, would be good. I'm trying to think of other things that, oh, uh, English muffin pizzas, or uh, I have this new idea. I don't think I have a video for it. But I would link to it if I do, but um, uh, butternut squash, like, you know, the top of the butternut squash. I know what my... My hands are making funny <laughs> shapes in the air, but the top of the butternut squash, slice round slices of butternut squash and put a little tomato paste or tomato sauce with some cheese and make little butternut squash pizzas. Super light, very filling, and it'll be just like a great before bed kind of, again, snack meal. Um, tortilla pizzas too. I go down the pizza route because that's what I tend to turn towards uh, when I want something fast, but more meal-like, less snack-like, you know what I mean? Um, let me think. Fast. Fast. Wraps. Uh, keep like large lettuce leaves in your um, fridge and then even just a slice of cheese and some like deli turkey and mustard. Just, I mean, really quick wraps. Things like that are really, really great. Um, I feel like I have to think of one more now. I love thinking of food ideas. I really, really enjoy coming up with things to eat. <laughs> I have a little bit of a problem, I think. I think keeping cans of soup, like nice, healthy, choice-ish, you know, light kind of cans of soups are great choices at night. I actually went through a trend where when I really, really wanted a snack at night, I would make myself have a bowl of soup first. You know, it's about 100, 150 calories, whatever, but it's filling and it's brothy, and um, I would think that's a really good... And again, if you make your own soup, uh, that would be great, something that you could just pop in the microwave right before you go to bed. So there are some ideas. I hope that helps. And again, like great job on uh, not being that tempted during work. I think that's awesome. And um, if you have an update for us, that would be great. How you're doing, weight loss, you know, leave it in the comments. Um, but I hope some of those ideas kind of help. And again, don't get hooked up on the whole should I eat three hours before bed thing or, um, you know, do what's feeling right for you. You know, find your own way. And, uh, you know, if, again, if you're keeping track of your calories and you're not going over or points or whatever it is that you're counting. You're doing Weight Watchers, I think. So then it, it's all good. It's all good stuff. <laughs> you're doing great, I think. I'm hoping you're doing great. Hoping you're doing great. Okay, I'm going to move on. Okay, next question is from Sharon. And Sharon says, I reached my lifetime goal about six years ago, but since then put back on 25 pounds. Do you think it is necessary to go to Weight Watcher meetings or join to lose? I'm not doing it on my own, but I'm really sick of Weight Watcher meetings. <laughs> what are I got sick of them too, to be honest. I really liked them the first few years, and then I think you kind of grow out of them. But anyway, that's another. What are your thoughts on this? I also like the old plan better than the points plus plan. All right, Sharon, you are me uh, at the beginning of last year. <laughs> so I totally know where you're coming from. You know, I was, uh, you know, a couple over couple pounds over my Weight Watcher goal and um, I kind of I tried to go back it didn't feel right the meetings weren't feeling right the new plan just wasn't clicking for me and um, I just had to go out on my own and I, finally after a year of kind of I I kind of shudder at saying plateau because I, I mean I guess it was I don't know I don't I don't I wasn't giving it really a hundred percent because I just wasn't there um, but kind of staying at the same weight for about a year I finally broke through and um, have reached kind of my goal. It's a little higher than it used to be, but I'm totally happy. Uh, there's so many variables that go into what you're, you should weigh. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. That being said, um, I don't. Your question is, do you do I think you need to join to lose? And I and I don't, especially someone like yourself who kind of already went through and graduated Weight Watchers. <laughs> I mean, they should really give out diplomas for lifetime members. <laughs> but you've graduated, you've moved on, and I think sometimes we have a hard time, myself included, and my blog is an example of this over the last two years. Um, we get stuck thinking we have to do what we used to do or what we did to be successful, um, but we don't. we fail to recognize that we're not the same person that we were then. Like, I am not the same person I was eight years ago when I was originally on Weight Watchers and losing weight for the first time. My diet is different, my activity level is different, my mentality is different, my lifestyle is different, my personality is even good. I mean, I'm, I've grown, I've changed, um, I'm just different. And so the things that worked for me then 
weren't working for me now. And it took me a really long time to figure out what will work for me now. But I think the goal is, is to continuously try something. And I just wrote about this on the blog. Um, I kind of bore my soul and talked about really all the things that I think really contributed to me being able to lose the weight originally. And I think um, the, the one point I made was that you, you have to find the strategy that works for you and you'll constantly be changing that strategy as you grow and change and mature. Um, it's, I think that's, I, I think that's pretty normal with almost everything in life, <laughs> right? I mean, we change, we just change things, you know, things change. So, um, I know I say this a lot, but that being said, <laughs> I think you need to, um, you need to find the new thing, you know, and whether or not that's like you said, you don't like the meetings anymore, but if the support really helps you, then maybe finding a group of people online that can support you you know, are you on Twitter? Can you reach out. For me, it was my fitness pal. I really fell in love with my fitness pal. I'm not as active socially on my fitness pal. I try when I have time and I do enjoy seeing people's updates and looking at their food journals and that kind of gave me that sense of uh, I'm not in this alone. I have people that, you know, struggle the same way I struggle and it, it gives me that sense of community that Weight Watchers gave me in a, in a live meeting. Um, and then with the food journal, that for me was the big kicker where I was like, okay, I need to find a new way to kind of give myself accountability in what I'm eating. Um, points wasn't working for me. I tried to do the food for like the food photo journal thing that wasn't really working for me. I tried to go back to paper that really wasn't working for me. Um, and then I tried my fitness pal and now I found something that worked for me. So you have to kind of actively keep trying things until you find the match and you'll find the match and you go like oh this is great and you know and then it might work for you for a couple weeks months and then maybe something will change like maybe I'll start to hate my fitness pal <laughs> in a couple weeks from now because I'll get annoyed with it and feel and then I'll move on to maybe taking photos of my food again or maybe I'll step away from the food journal for a little while I mean there's just you're always going to be changing so I don't think you need to go back just because you um originally lost your weight with Weight Watchers and Reach Goal, don't feel, don't constrict yourself in thinking that's the only way. There are other ways and you've changed and I think accepting that about yourself and moving on is, um, is growing. You're growing and, and that's great. So, yet another person who wrote this a long time ago, um, plus six plus months, <laughs> so Sharon, give us an update. Um, you know, are you still struggling with that, those 25 pounds? Um, did you find a new way? I would love to know in the comments and I will definitely send you an email. I'm going to send everyone an email and apologize for taking forever to reply to you. I feel like a bad, um, a bad blogger, which I have a whole nother post brewing in me about blogging, by the way. Uh, somebody left a comment on yesterday's post and it, it was another one of those comments that got me thinking. I'm like... Yes, she hit the nail on the head. That's why I'm, you know, so I'll probably, if I have time today, um, write about that later. Yes. <laughs> All right, one more question, and then I'm going to go because I have a few other things to do before uh, Little Bean wakes up from his nap. Okay. So last question. It's a little bit longer, so bear with me as I squint. Um, last question is from Kara. Kara says, hello, just listen to your interview on Half Size Me, um, which I'll link to. It's, I forgot I did that interview. That was really fun. Congrats to you and all of your huge accomplishments. And thank you for putting yourself out here in Blogland to help others on their weight loss journey. After my fourth and probably last child, oh my god, I hope so. Not that no big families are great, but I can't. I can't imagine. I couldn't imagine two, and now I have two. Four just blows my mind, literally. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm working hard on getting all of my extra pregnancy weight off and then some. I've always been in the larger sizes my whole life. Around puberty, I hit a steady weight in a size of 12 to 14. Although I know I was bigger than most of my other friends, I was fine with my size and I'm thank for thankful for having a good self-esteem. However, now I feel like getting these last 15 to 20 pounds off is more about getting as healthy as possible and losing all the flabby fat that makes me feel less than fit. Really, I visualize my ideal body looking fit, not skinny. So my question, I guess, is how to overcome a plateau. I have been on Weight Watchers since May and have lost 15 pounds and I do feel so much better. I do realize that I eat a lot of fruit 
and that's actually helping me keep my sugar cravings under control. But I am wondering if I need to limit my fruit intake even if they are just zero points. I'm scared to limit the fruit because I feel like this gives me a sense of freedom that if I'm really starving, I can always fill up on fruit. I really do not like feeling hungry. I don't think any of us do. <laughs> Thanks for any and all advice you may have. You are an inspiration. All right, Kara. Um, the zero point fruit thing. Uh, what a controversy in Weight Watcher land. It's so funny to me. Um, I haven't really been keeping up. But uh, I... I mean, when you're getting down to those last 10, 15 pounds, and um, again, I'm, I'm not a, like a nutritionist or a trainer, so I, I kind of um, shy away from advising on particular, like, you know, nutrition advice and those kinds of things. I kind of take a very broad stroke to things, and I kind of agree with you. I think fruit, um, I, there's a point where, you, like I said this just the other day on the blog, like, uh, no one got fat by eating too many grapes. And there's a point where you're like, I don't want to obsess about this, so I'm just going to eat some damn grapes and be fine with it. Like, what's the big deal? But I think once you get down to, if you really have specific body goals, which I personally stay away from because it creates an obsessiveness that I, I don't want to deal with it. I, I just can't go down there and, like, I, I, I can't even go down that path even talking about it. So... <laughs> Um, but when you do have, you know, some people do have specific, specific, like body fat percentage goals and things like that. Um, I can see fruit becoming an issue. So I would say, uh, I have a few things that popped in my head when I was reading your question. Um, one is, I think it's great that you have, uh, and I do this myself as well, kind of have like a, a backup, like a go-to where you know, you don't like to be hungry and you know you're going to want to munch and you know you want to eat. And so your go-to is fruit, which I think I think it's great, but maybe easing up a little bit on the fruit and kind of replacing it with other free foods, celery sticks, carrots, um, cucumber slices, like go down the vegetable route just for a little while. See if you can find a couple like munchy vegetables, like, like sugar snap peas, amazing raw, just get a big bag of sugar snap peas and that could be your munching food. I remember when I used to, um, or not when I used to, when I when I originally lost the weight, I remember, like, I, I hosted, we didn't, we only had one kid back then, and he was a baby, so it was really easy to host, like, parties and stuff, so we would have people come over the house, and I would host a party, and I was counting points, and I was in the throw of Weight Watchers, and I was doing really good, and I, I didn't want to, um, like, throw off my, my progress, and I would still put bowls of chips out for everybody, like, I'd have the Doritos, and the salsa, and all that stuff, and I'd be like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but I, I can't sit around and watch everyone else just eating chips for four hours and drinking beers. Like, it's like, you know, so I had my, um, my light beer, <laughs> although I don't drink beer much anymore, but, or I went with like the light Mike's Harlem Benade or something and, uh, carrots. I had, uh, the bag of baby carrots or regular carrots that you can cut or whatever. And, um, People would make fun of me. My husband would be like, I would be eating carrots the whole time. But I knew what I need. I needed, it, it's not the chip. I don't care about the chip. It's it's the the act, right, of, of needing something to munch, wanting something to eat, doing something to your hands. What, whatever it is, like, when you, you know, you sit around and you socialize and you eat. That's what people do. And so I found success by replacing what I would sit around and eat and socialize. And I would just have my big bag of carrots. I just heard the baby. <laughs> but I would just have my big bag of carrots and I would munch on carrots and munch on carrots and munch on carrots. Um, so I, I think that strategy works. I mean, speaking from experience, it worked for me having that kind of those uh, handful of go-to munchy things that you don't worry about. You don't worry about, like I think I counted the bag as a point, which carrots over more than that. But I didn't care. Like, again, you can't get obsessive about things, but having a go-to. So... Long story short, as I wrap this up and go get my baby, um, replace some of the fruit with some vegetables. There are so many great snackable vegetables out there. Don't, don't, you know, and I don't know, you didn't say whether or not you were a vegetable person, but again, cucumber, sugar snap, sugar snap peas, snap peas, um, you know, the classics, carrots and celery, and even cut them in fun shapes. Like, or they sell those carrot chips now where the carrots are even, you can cut them at chips, but Okay, I have to go. <laughs> I have to wrap this up. So, um, oh, I'm glad I got it all done, though. So I'm, I'm going to cut this short, Kara. Give us an update, see how you're doing, and I will um, talk to you guys later. i gotta, I got to go get the two-year-old. Look.
someone come to say hi? You want to say hi? No. You woke up from nap grumpy. How could you? Oh, I shouldn't say that. I wake up from naps grumpy. You want to wave? No. All right. We're going to go read some books. Bye again, guys. Thanks for watching.